This week's project is a Dell Latitude 5400i58 generation motherboard. You might recognize the labeling and the bubble wrap because I got this from the same guy as last week. I love the way he does that actually. It's giving me an idea to keep them like this myself. He just gets old spare bubble wrap, I think, wraps it around, sellotapes tapes it at the end, sticks a label on the front. But it looks really professional and it keeps the boards nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this board out and I'm gonna see if we can fix it. So as you can see, I paid 39 euros for this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this out, take pictures, and we're all gonna have a look at this on the screen. Okay, so this is what the board looks like when I scanned it in. I had a look around both sides of the board and I cannot see any signs of visible damage. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check and see if there's any shorts on the input if there's no shorts in the input section, we're going to go ahead and inject 19.5 volts into it, which I think is the voltage that should come from the adapter. Again, I don't have an adapter for this one, but we can use the DC power supply in its place. So let me zoom in on the input section. I don't have a schematic yet for this, so I'm just going to fly solo without the schematic. This is the DC in jack, and as you can see, we've got quite good detail on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you through just checking for a short on the input section. Let's do that now. I've zoomed in a bit because the components are really, really small here. I'm going to give you a quick tour of the input section. Here's our DC jack. We've got two pins connected together here and two pins connected together here. Now, we can recognize this as our input voltage because there's an inductor on it. The inductor is always on the positive input. So our two pins here are connected together through this inductor and then onto the three pins together here which are the source pins of our first MOSFET. After it passes through our first MOSFET it comes down here and onto the drain pins of our second MOSFET and once it passes through our second MOSFET it comes out to here and normally we expect to see a current sense resistor here sometimes it's further away on the board but there will be one somewhere because the laptop needs to know what the input current is and that's the purpose of the current sense resistor. So that's the path that our voltage takes on the input. Let's take some measurements at each of those points. Introducing my multimeter in diode mode and with the power off of course we're going to take some measurements. So I place my red probe to ground and place my black probe on the input inductor and I find that it measures OL at this point over the limit. So there's no short at the input jack. Passing through our inductor, we come on to the three source pins of our first MOSFET. So I take a measurement here, and we find it also measures OL at this point. So no short at the first MOSFET. Next, I want to take a measurement between the two MOSFETs. So the easiest place to do that is probably on the drain pins here. So once again, in diode mode, I place my black probe to the drain pins of the first MOSFET, and I take a measurement of OL. So there's no short between the two MOSFETs either. And lastly, I want to take a measurement after the second MOSFET. So that comes out to here where it should be our main 19.5 volts power rail. So I place my probe to the source pins of the second MOSFET and we measure 0 0.575 at this point. We don't have any obvious shorts on the input section of this motherboard. So I'm going to bring power to the motherboard and see if it powers on. Since I don't have a power adapter for this laptop, I introduce my DC power supply to bring power to the board. So we set it to 19.5 volts, which is the voltage that this motherboard takes. I connect my black wire to ground, and I connect my red wire to the DC input. I'm just connecting at this inductor here because it's easier. There's a nice big pad here I can connect to. It's a little bit safer and a little bit more convenient than connecting it to these pins here. So when I turned on my power supply, it immediately drew 0 0.014 amps in standby mode. So that's 14 milliamps. Now, we would have seen with the Dell that I was working on last week, it was about 11 milliamps in standby. So it's in around where it should be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check along that input section and just make sure my 19.5 volts is getting onto the main power rail. So with my DC power supply still connected to the motherboard, I introduce my multimeter in volts DC in a 20 volt range. I connect my black probe to ground and I connect my red probe just to the first inductor. So we're going to measure at this point exactly where we're injecting just to make sure that we're getting our 19.5 volts. And when I check there, I measure 19.5 
Next we want to measure the voltage after the first MOSFET. So this is our first MOSFET here. The easiest place to measure is probably on this diode right here because that's connected to the drain pins of this MOSFET. So I place my probe to this point here and we measure 19.5, so 19.5 volts there. It's making it through the first MOSFET. So we have 19.5 volts right here, which means that this MOSFET must be turned on and allowing the 19.5 volts through to here. So that 19.5 volts then goes down onto our second MOSFET right here. So we need to know if this is switched on and allowing the 19.5 volts through to the system. So I'm just going to measure on the other side of that MOSFET on the source pins right here. And when I measure here, I find that there is 19.5 volts here also. So it looks like our 19.5 volts is making it through to the system. So what I need to do now is try and locate where our current sense resistor is. I'm sure there's one somewhere on the board and we're going to measure the voltage there as well. I located the main current sense resistor. The current sense resistor is on the main power rail at this point right here, PR700. How do I know this is the one connected after our first input MOSFETs? Well, I disconnected the power and I checked it for continuity. But this is it. So the one check we want to do here is just to make sure that our 19.5 volts is getting to here as well. I suspect that nothing has been harmed between the two MOSFETs at this point, but just to be sure. So again, in volts DC with my black probe placed to ground, I take a measurement at our current sense resistor and I find that it measures 19.5 volts. So it looks like we have 19.5 volts on our main power rail. Okay, so where are we at this point? Well, at this point we've established we have 19.5 volts on our main current sense resistor. So our main power rail is present and it's 19.5 volts, which is what it should be. Now with the older style of laptops, the main power rail used to be fed down to all of the secondary circuits. That would be the input. And then you would get an output from another regulation IC that would give you like 1.2 volts for the RAM, 5 volts for USB, different voltages like that. However, with this one, I noticed that there is one of these Intercell 9538BHs. And from another video we've done here before, I think that takes our 19.5 and regulates it down to a lower voltage, which it then calls system voltage and that goes across all of our secondary circuits. So before going any further, let's going to take a look at the data sheet for this and see if that is the case. I found a data sheet from Intercell that's uh, for an IC that's similar to the power management IC that we have in this motherboard. Now if you take a look at it here, what we have is our adapter voltage comes in this side, it goes through a current sense resistor and then onto a high side low side MOSFET configuration. Then it goes through an inductor out another high side low side MOSFET configuration and it's then referred to as VSYS. So the point that I was making earlier is correct. Unlike the older motherboards where if you have your 19.5 volts on the main power rail you can then expect to find that 19.5 volts as the input to the secondary circuits. That's not the case here. The 19.5 volts should only be going to this IC. It's then regulated down to a voltage that they refer to as VSYS. I'm not sure what this is, but what I know is that we should have 19.5 volts on the input to this MOSFET, and we should have a lower regulated voltage coming out. So we need to check what this VSYS voltage is. I think I've located the components. Uh, from this on the actual motherboard. Just a disclaimer here, this isn't the exact data sheet for this, but it's a similar setup of a similar Intercell power management IC. And I'm sort of assuming that, that the one that we have on this motherboard is something the same. So we have a voltage in coming in here, which is our 19.5 volts for this motherboard. We have a current sense resistor, which seems to correspond to this current sense resistor right here. After that, it goes on to two MOSFETs. Now, I think this package right here is that dual MOSFET configuration. So it's coming across here onto this dual MOSFET, onto this inductor, which corresponds to L1, and then onto a second dual MOSFET, which is Q3 and Q4. So we should have VSYS out here. So what I need to do is I need to measure and make sure that we have VSYS. I'm not sure what it's meant to be. But I'll take a measurement and see is it low or high and then try and find out whether it's correct or not. So let's take those voltage measurements. Once again, with my 
DC power supply connected so we have power connected to the motherboard I introduce my multimeter once again in volts DC I place my black probe to ground and we take two measurements we take first of all a measurement at the inductor here and when I measured there I found that there was 4.2 volts at this point the next point we want to measure at is right here so this is where I have deduced that it's called V-SYS and this is the system voltage that's sent down to the rest of the secondary circuits. So I place my probe to this capacitor right here and we find that there is 8.62 volts at this point. So our V-SYS voltage is 8.62 volts. I'm not sure if that's correct, I just have something in the back of my head that that was the voltage that we measured on another board. But what I'm going to do next is... I'm going to check and see if we have 3 volts on the power button. If we do, I'm going to try and power it on and see what happens. I found the power button on the other side of the board and this is what it looks like right here. So what we need to check is to see if we have 3 volts on this. We know already we have our main 19.5 volt power rail looks good. We have 8.62 volts on our V-SYS rail. And I just need to see if we have our 3.3 .3 volts always on. Now. If we can see that we have our 3.3 volts always on, I'm just going to plug in a display and try and power it on and see what happens. But let's just check it. So I introduce my multimeter once again in volts DC. I place my black probe to ground and I'm going to try my red probe on the different pins of this one. I think there's one, two, three and four. So when I place my probe to this pin right here, I found that there was 3 volts on this. So it looks like we're getting our 3.3 volts always on as well as our 19.5 volt main power rail and our 8.62 so I guess the next thing to try is to plug in a display press that power button and we'll see what happens and so to the real world this is my setup here so I've got my black wire connected to our ground and I've got my red wire connected to my inductor as I showed on the screen so we're going to power on the DC power supply with 19.5 volts and as you can see, it's drawing 14 milliamps right now. So we've already measured and we found that there's 3 volts on the power button. So what I'm going to try and do here, as you can see, I've hooked up a HDMI monitor, external, and I'm going to try and press the power button. So let's try it right here. So I'm pressing the power button now. So we have a light. Okay, it's drawing more current. Oh. Well, I wasn't really expecting that. Um, it looks like the motherboard is actually booting. Now, I've done nothing to this so far. Dell 5400 i5 8th generation not powering on. Hmm. Looks like it's powering on to me. This is an unusual one, isn't it? Uh, the board is certainly marked as faulty, not powering on, as you can see from the wrapping. Um, but when I apply power to it, it powers on and there's nothing wrong with it at all. Now, it may be the case that there was a problem with the adapter or the DC input jack, or there was a problem with the original screen, or maybe there's a problem with the battery that was causing it to shut down. But when I'm examining the motherboard on its own in isolation, there does not seem to be a fault with it. So I don't think we have anything really to learn from this one this week. I have in fact a working motherboard without having to do anything to it. But the one thing I have learned here is if we look at our schematic for this again, because I'm sure we will come across this type of IC again. This ISL953XX series of power management ICs, they take a 19.5 volt on the input here. Uh, for some reason on the inductor in the middle on L1 I was measuring 4.2 I'm not sure what that should be it seems like it takes the voltage down and then boosts it up again maybe somebody can point me to where I can find an explanation as to why that happens but the important thing is that we should be measuring 19.5 volts on the input and on the output of this laptop I was measuring 8.62 volts as what they call V-SYS or system voltage so I'm sure that information will come useful um, when we're testing other motherboards that are similar and I have a number of other motherboards that are similar to this one that are also labeled as faulty or not powering on and we're going to take a look at those in the coming videos just want to say a big thanks to all the comments guys I 
didn't get a chance to reply to all of them there. I'm going to try and go back through them now. But the videos take me quite a bit of time to put together. And I'm busy in work these days. So I'm not getting as much time to go through the stuff on the channel as I would like. But I'll try and read back through and comment on as many of those as I can. Um, keep liking and subscribing if you like what we do here. If you have any comments or suggestions, put them down below. And I will be back with something new next week.